on the die roll. He plays first, plays a, an Ink Moth Nexus. Uh, Michael Jacob leads with a Glacial Fortress tapped. So players playing at a brisk pace, AJ Rampant Growths, digging for a, we'll find out. I'm guessing a mountain. Nope, another forest, I'm wrong. So MJ has, looks like a gut shot in his hand. I believe I saw a Inferno Titan in AJ's hand, though maybe it was just something. No, that's a Primeval Titan. I knew it was something big. So this matchup is uh, very very based on the uh, amount of counter magic that the four color control deck is able to, to put forth. Uh, MJ's deck has four mana leaks and a single copy of Dissipate uh, to deal with AJ's threats. He, uh, he has a lot of cards that also aren't particularly great in his main deck uh, in this matchup. He has Ratchet Bomb, he has Gut Shot, uh, he has Timely Reinforcements, just a lot of things that, that aren't particularly well suited to dealing with the kind of threats that the Wolf Run deck puts out. So AJ has a Solemn Simulacrum which resolves, and that's usually a good sign. Uh, Solemn Simulacrum is a card that, if I'm on the control side of the table, I generally want to counter because it's able to slow down the Wolf Run deck so much, and it ultimately ends up being a card that the, uh, the control deck generally will need to end up dealing with. Oh, MJ has a good response to it with Phantasmal Image. I always feel, feel kind of awkward when my opponent is able to image my, uh, any of my utility creatures. I, uh, when I was playing Viridian Emissaries in a beatdown deck, I would play against Control and they'd, they'd image my Emissary. I'm like, oh, that really didn't go how I wanted to at all. <laughs> but it's setting up the good turn for the Wolf Rune. True, true. I mean, AJ does have access to six mana next turn, and he's just gonna, whatever he plays is going to resolve. MJ doesn't have, you know, anything that can, that can stop it. So, Primeval Titan comes down, and MJ didn't even, didn't even want to represent Mana Leak there. And it's, it's an interesting play. A lot of players would just, uh, they just hold up the mana and hope that their opponent wouldn't, uh, wouldn't try to cast the Titan. Uh, I don't know if MJ felt like it, it, was, it was obvious he didn't have a Mana Leak because it didn't stop the Solemn Simulacrum. Or if he just put AJ on, you know, being willing to cast it into a mana leak, yeah. you know, if he had another. So uh, this is the this is the part of the game where it gets pretty tough for four color control. He does have gut shot to deal with those uh, those nexus, but just the huge creatures plus uh, plus wolf run can definitely end the game very quickly. Yeah. So AJ passes the turn back. Doesn't want to let MJ uh, trade solemns. Looks like MJ has a Ponder. I think those are a couple of Snapcasters. A Desperate Ravings. So MJ really needs, he really needs to get that Titan off the table. If he gets attacked with it, it ends up being particularly bad. And that's a Mana Leak, and a land and a Sun Titan, I think. So, oh, that's a Timely Reinforcement in his hand. Is he keeping this? I don't know that. No, looking at the, looking for the ponder still. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that he can afford to keep this. I guess maybe he's gonna take the land and then snap cast back the ponder. No. What's happening here? <laughs> so, AJ can just attack with Titan with impunity here. If, if I were AJ, hmm. he can attack with Titan and Solemn, and if he wants, kill the, uh, the opposing image with Wolf Run. That will get him two more, that'll do eight damage and get him two more Nexus. That will give him uh, pretty definite inevitability. Oh. Yeah, both come in and Let's see if AJ makes the play I'm discussing. So yeah, trigger goes and fetches. I would assume two more ink moth. So one of the one of the significant advantages of the the red wolf run uh, version, as opposed to the mono green versions that used to be very popular, is that they can afford to play uh, many many more copies of ink moth nexus. So this is kind of interesting. He gets. A copper line gorge. Does he already have all three? Oh, he, he already three has three. Ink three. Ink okay, okay. Yeah. I, I, I only saw two of them. Yeah, the, the the last one was his first land. And yep, he wolf runs the uh, the image. And we're seeing alchemy. 
I guess in response to that. All right, so the image will die, and we're gonna see a bunch of Sun Titans appear on uh, on MJ's turn. He takes eight damage. So I, I was saying that uh, the, the gut shots were relatively unimpressive in this matchup, but they actually are, are pretty important at allowing the four color control deck to just tap out and not worry about dying to Ink Moth next just in a situation like this. At least this. another turn. Right. So I mean, like, while while he you know may just get you know a Nexus attacking him for potentially lethal poison, he can gut shot it and uh, and then end up in a situation where he's actually able to. It looks like he doesn't have another land. Uh, timely. Okay, yeah. He's actually still stuck on these yeah. five land. He has he has the Titan in his hand, but he's not able to cast it yet. So he goes back up to 18 life. But yeah, just a single gut shot can allow him to kill an Ink Moth, untap, then snap cast it back, kill another Ink Moth to, to prevent multiple turns worth of lethal attacks. It's pretty interesting because the, the gut shot's also clearly fantastic against a lot of the creature decks. So it's doing, it's doing a lot of work in a lot of different places. I have to say I like it. <laughs> Here AJ, recognizing the potential of a gut shot, is considering, you know, well, do I just attack with all of my Ink Moths? Do I just try and poison you out progressively like that? I think that's a totally reasonable line of play. He also could attack and just sink everything into Wolf Run on the Titan or the uh, Simulacrum. The I, I, I would be inclined to, to just pump it into the Titan because the Simulacrum could theoretically die to some sort of removal spell, maybe a Galvanic Blast, maybe a pair of Gut Shots, and you would have basically gotten yourself time walked. So MJ is at 18 life. If he sends the Titan, were he to send the Titan and try and go over in terms of, uh, of damage, he'd be able to do, it looks like, Eight, da eight more damage to be able to do 14. But it looks like he's going to go with the Ink Moth plan. Yeah, I like this a lot uh, a lot better than uh, than either the going all in on Titan or trying to kill him with a, a single Ink Moth with Wolf Run because it, it spreads out his, uh, his threats. He doesn't get... Uh, he gets to deal four poison here, leaving his leaving MJ at uh, at six poison, or at six poison remaining. Oh, we're seeing a Snapcaster for a gut shot, I'm guessing. So he's going to do... Oh, is he blocking the Titan? He's blocking everything on the Titan. Okay. Has he cast the gut shot at all? No, he hasn't cast it yet. It looks like he's, he's going to try to kill the Titan here in combat. It's interesting. All right, now he's only dealing... Well, well, he's in five, and he has the gut shot, shot remaining, yeah. so that's, well, that's pretty interesting. Well, with AJ grabbing the second, another Kessig... It looks, it looks like AJ has a, a Galvanic Blast in his hand, so this is probably not going to go how, how MJ wants. Oh, is he letting damage resolve? That uh, looks like it. Huh. If AJ has Galv Blast, which he does, I'm pretty sure I would have Galv Blast to keep my Titan alive. That seems... I'm a little confused by that. I guess he's holding up Galv Blast, or... If, he's, if he holds up Galv Blast or Wolf Run, he can Wolf Run or, or, or Galv Blast to kill a Sun Titan uh, that's copied by, with Image, but it seems like having his own Primeval Titan in his play is more powerful. So, ooh, wow. One of the cards in MJ's hand is Elishnorn. <laughs> if he could resolve that Elishnorn, that would put a serious crimp in AJ's plan of killing him with Ink Moth Nexus. So he has he has six land right now, and he is threatening. AJ is threatening lethal in multiple ways. <laughs> but uh, if that Elishnorn resolves, AJ and AJ doesn't really he doesn't have. Oh, he played a seventh land. That uh. that is. Very bad for AJ. Now that AJ's uh, Titan is dead, he is in serious trouble to that that Elish Norn. Let's see. 
Yeah, I, I, I really don't understand AJ's play last turn. I, he, he's oh, sitting there the with... Was, did you see the draw, though? What was Devil's it? play. Oh, really? Yeah, he draws Devil's play off the simulacrum. Oh, if he drew Devil's play, he probably he should, should he have Gal blasted MJ at the end of his turn? How much... How many land does he have? He's got the four... It might not matter either way. Well, it might. Because he... It, it, if, yeah, if he, drew the, if he drew the Devil's Play, what he should have done at the... At the uh, actually, no, not in response, because he would have lost his, his Ink Moths. Is he trying to activate Ink Moths? So, um, I, I hope not, <laughs> for his sake. For five... One, two... Try to count his mana. It's making it difficult. There's six, seven, eight... He's got 12, 13, including the Sphere. Oh, he's 13. Yeah, you can just cast Devil's Play for 12. And kill him now. Yeah. Just I flat don't... out. What's going on? One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven. Eight. What? <laughs> one, one, two, three, four, five. Is, is there are our life totals right? No, MJ's at MJ's at eighteen from the time the reinforcements, right? Or was he? Yeah, at, okay. he did gain. So we're yeah. Let's, we're not let's right confirm that because <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that that AJ isn't just not killing him with Devil's <laughs> play. Yeah, so it looks like he's just going to try and get extra use out of the Devil's Play so that he can still swing and get some poison in afterwards. Yeah. So, yeah, five, and then he's going to fire up some Ink Moths. And animate three, it looks like, if he so chooses. Is, how many, I can't tell how many counters are on that sphere. Yeah, so there's at least one left. All right, so he gets him. So we're looking at... MJ has... He actually has a gut shot in his hand. Yeah, so he's at least taking two more poison. Yep, so he goes to six poison. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm fairly certain that M Michael Jacob is actually at 18 life, so uh, that was not just a, I will not kill you with devil's play there. And he draws um, Dissipate, which might be a little late. Yeah, Dissipate isn't really what he needs here. He, uh, he is now at six poison. He's facing down three Inkmoth Nexus, backed up by two Wolf Run. So... I don't, know, I don't think AJ has quite enough mana to, to individually make two of them lethal, because that requires, uh, that requires 16 mana, which he certainly doesn't have. Right. But MJ is still in a pretty tight spot facing, facing all those down. But I, 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 still, I still don't get AJ's decision uh, a couple turns ago to not use his Galvanic Blast to keep his Primeval Titan on the board. That just seems... That just seems mind-boggling to me, that, that he wouldn't want to keep Primeval Titan in play. Well, I guess I could see it as he's using a gut shot to hit a Primeval instead of an Ink Moth. Right, but so, I mean, his, he, you know, like, he MJ, kind of MJ's, MJ's, MJ, poison, though. he, he, well, he does keep his, his uh, Ink Moth uh, line of attack uh, more open. He is closing off his ability to win yeah. with that Primeval yeah. Titan. He, if, he, if he kills the... Uh, if he kills the Snapcaster Mage, he ends up keeping, or one of the tokens, whichever, he ends up keeping Primeval Titan in play, which forces MJ to Ladies deal with both Primeval Titan yep. and Ink Moth Nexus. Taking place in the Mississippian room across the convention center. If you know where that is, please head over there now. If so, you and as we're seeing, oh, and. Yeah, now the, uh, the, the Ink Moths are showing themselves to be pretty vulnerable here as Ghost Quarter takes one of them out. Sun Titan comes down, gets an image, it's going to bring back another Ghost Quarter. So a AJ's, AJ's poison plan is that. done. Yeah. It, is, it is basically just done. He would have he been in much better shape if he had a Primeval Titan. Yeah. So is Michael officially at 10? Uh, I. And can, we, can we get an update on the uh, on the? If he's at ten, he's at doubles. He, okay, he's at he's at ten life. Is he at doubles play range anyway? I don't think AJ has thirteen mana, does he? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. He's actually one short if he has. If he is in fact at ten. Oh, with that with that with blast, blast, he should be able to kill him with the devil's play plus with the devil's play flashback. Does he have enough red mana? He has one, he, two, one, three. Two, he's three, got three, yeah, four he sources. Yeah, he has four red sources. So. If MJ is, uh, MJ is in fact at twelve, at ten, we've ha we've had that confirmed. So I believe he can just galvanic blast him and devil's play him right out. And that looks like he's what he's going to do. It looks like he's counting, figuring out what what mana he has access to. So uh, AJ has uh, has said that he is running on about an hour of sleep. So <laughs> I've certainly been in that position and uh, found. 
found things like math much harder than they otherwise would be. But yeah, I mean, like in in particular, uh, that that primeval titan potentially represents a lot of damage. Oh, yeah. You know, if, if that primeval had had a chance to attack over the past you know turn or so and gets him a ton more mana that he could use to you know cast him in the devil's Court. Granted, he didn't have the the. Uh, Devil's play in his hand at the time, but well, he has nothing at instant speed to fear with attacking with a large primeval titan. Uh, yeah, it's true. This could be the, this could MJ could be so mad about this slow roll. He's just like, okay, <laughs> you. He's like, really? <laughs> I think he, I think he finally figured it out. Yeah, Devil's play you. The full amount. Devil's play you for eight. <laughs> MJ's like, yep, okay, yep, I'm dead. There Fine. you go. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I guess I guess MJ actually was at twelve there, uh, and and AJ could have just killed him. Oh, just killed him right so off with the devil's play. So uh, yeah, AJ maybe a little sleep deprivation, <laughs> deprivation affecting uh, affecting his ability to see these plays, but uh, pulls that one out anyway. So going to the sideboard, uh, looks like MJ has access to. Ludwig's Test Subject, which is, I think, one of the coolest cards for this sort of matchup that I've heard of. Uh, I, I was leafing through Jerry Thompson's deck uh, at the beginning of the event, and I, I come across a flip card. I'm like, what is this? You know, and I look at it, it says 03, and he's like, it's the Test Subject. I'm like, for what? He's like, oh, for Wolf Run. And I sort of, I, I stopped to think about it, I'm like, that's awesome. Because one of the issues playing a control deck against Wolf Run is that you, you need to be able to deploy a threat that is, is game-winning without giving them the opportunity to do the same. Yeah. And the test subject is this, is a card that you can just play out in turn two, and you can just leave up mana, say go, end step, pump my test subject, pump my test subject, and eventually it's 13-13 and just demolishes them. And then there's, Your egg yeah. hatches into a gigantic lizard monster and just eats their face. <laughs> and I, 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 I think that's an awesome, awesome plan, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see it in action. Uh, MJ also has access to Jace Memory Adept, which is a very interesting sort of win condition uh, against threat light decks. Uh, I'm not sure that you necessarily see it come, in, come into play here, but uh, it's certainly the sort of thing that is, is great against control decks, and I could see uh, an argument to bring it against Wolfram. He has a, a Flash Freeze, he has some Surgical Extractions, Snapcaster and a Gate. So my, my thought is that he's probably going to take out Ratchet Bomb. Ratchet Bomb's pretty awful here. He will likely remove uh, Timely Reinforcements, Probably pacifism. Um, after that, he, the deck is pretty tough to, to cyber out. Day of Judgment maybe maybe stays in, maybe goes out. Uh, he's likely to expect that AJ will be bringing in Thrun. So having Day of Judgment as a follow-up to a Thrun at least immediately is good. Plus giving you the ability to clear out some opposing Titans is always nice. Um, AJ's sideboard has Beast Within, Thrun, and Garrick Primal Hunter, all of which pretty much certainly come in. Uh, I imagine he will be cyborging out his Viridian Emissary um, and likely Slag Storms. So that looks like four cards that come out for sure. Um, Galvanic Blast is another another you know pretty weak card here. So uh, he has one, two, three, four, five, six cards that certainly come in. Uh, he has Active Aggression in his cyborg, which is kind of interesting, uh, as well as Traitor's Blood, one of each. Not really sure what's going on there. Um, I don't know that that's something that I would bring in even if your opponent's a Sun Titan deck, just because Sun Titan is not really the sort of card you're generally going to get with uh, and uh, get a huge advantage out of yeah. from those. The best but, card uh, you could get it would be Elish Norn. And I mean, stealing yeah. your opponent's Elish Norn, unless, unless you, you have some Ink Moths, you're like, all right, <laughs> take your Elish Norn. Now, instead of my Ink Moths being completely dead cards, you're completely dead. So, uh, so I, I, I think uh, AJ likely brings out uh, the slag storms, the uh, the Viridian, maybe not the Viridian emissary. That might stay in just because it's better than you know better than some Geist Flames or Galf Blast. Yeah. Galf Blast did did get some get some damage to the face that game. It did matter. Mm -hmm. uh, MJ, if I'm MJ, I'm probably taking out timely reinforcements, uh, pacifism, and ratchet bomb, and bringing in the test subject. I, I would, I'd bring in Jace, but probably just because I've never played Jace in the matchup before and I want to try it out, but he probably has a better idea of how good it is than I do. Yeah. But uh, Flash Free certainly comes in. And I imagine likely the Snapcaster and maybe a Negate. Negate's probably not that good. It's only really stopping Planeswalker and Zen Green Sun. Yeah. Well, it, it does stop Rampant Growth or Sphere, so those are pretty relevant. 
And uh, while, I, while I was discussing, you know, prior to the, the match that, that Gutshot was one of the weaker cards, I actually, you know, the more that I thought about it and, you know, sort of seeing how that game played out, Gutshot's actually a very important card in the matchup, and I don't think I'd touch them. I think I'd keep them in. So players are shuffling up. It looks like AJ presents. I'm going to go ahead and guess he chose to play first. How do you uh, how do you think these cyborg games are gonna go? Uh, it's still looking like I'm still gonna lean towards Wolf Run. Mm -hmm. Like it just even after cyborging, MJ does seem to be a little counter light. So I mean, as we saw that game, he just he just had nothing he could do to stop that Titan. You, you know, he had to have the counter right then. Yeah, he didn't have the dissipate early. Right, and uh, after cyborging, he doesn't get that many more counters. He only has one more one flash freeze that comes in. And you know a Snapcaster Mage that represents potentially another another counter spell, um, and maybe negate. But those are you know those are not really the the best sort of answers that uh, you know the, the the number of answers that he really is, is going to want to you know, be sure that he can beat these guys. Yeah. So uh, his images are going to be working overtime to uh, to keep Thrun off the board. Thrun is just is just a nightmare for a lot of uh, a lot of control decks. I see uh, a lot of versions of you know blue white or blue black whatnot. That are, are so incredibly weak to Thrun. And uh, you, know, you see some people have Liliana, but Liliana is not really great at dealing with Thrun if your opponent also has mana creatures or has, you know, Free and Emissary or whatever. Or even Ink Moth Nexus. You yeah, know, you, you have pitch it. If you have a, a, a Liliana and they just have a mana up, you know, their Thrun is gonna be gonna live and that Ink Moth's gonna take one for the team. Looks like AJ Mulligan. And MJ starts with the, the bomb artifact, Traveler's Amulet. Let's see. <laughs> and AJ, Rampant Growth, gets countered by Flash Freeze. And... Which looks like it might be the only counter. Um, uh, I see a Snapcaster. It looks like a Forbidden Alchemy. Yeah. But it, he, he knows that he's not in danger of... AJ resolving anything for, for quite a few turns in terms of in terms of his mana generation. So the the threatening things don't start until at least five mana uh, when when Garrick happens. So forbidden alchemy for Michael Jacob. And he I didn't see a whole lot to choose from in there. He sneaks one by us, putting two flashback cards in his bin. That was a sweet forbidden alchemy. And goes to dig with his amulet for, I'm guessing, basic mountain. Yep. So four colors of mana already, <laughs> with many, many ways to use those colors uh, in his hand and his graveyard. So this is the sort of game that Michael Jacob wants to play. He was able to slow down AJ Soccer's uh, mana ramp, and now he is, you know, at least has to feel pretty good about his position. AJ resolves or casts a Solemn Simulacrum, which looks like it's going to resolve. Yep. And this is this is sort of an interesting spot because uh, AJ, you know, resolving the Solemn Simulacrum, given the fact that MJ was willing to counter his uh, initial rampant growth, has to imagine that Michael Jacob has Snapcaster in his hand. That that sort of play. Uh, Definitely represents that you know. Okay, I'm fine using this because I have I have more where that came from. Right. Um, yep. But you know, the, the most likely uh, additional counter he has, is, uh, or additional you know sort of reactive card he has, is is Snapcast from that position. I think. So it looks like that's is that an ancient grudge and a mana leak. I think a couple lands. I think. So I don't. I couldn't really see if he had it land in his hand. So he does, has at least one. one. Yep. So I think. Yeah, he takes the mana leak. Putting yet another flashback card in his graveyard. And there's pacifism. So here, you know, if, if I'm AJ, I have to I have to strongly consider just sending my solemn and just trying just putting in damage with solemn. Yeah. Because you know he has he has titans and such, but you know MJ has, MJ's at least representing access to Snapcaster for that uh, that flash freeze. And 
you, know, you have to wonder what, what's your plan here. You, are, you, are you just going to try and run him out of counter spells? MJ's in a position where he's he's drawn a lot of cards. He's seen a lot of extra cards, so he's, he certainly has answers. And you know, I, th I think it's reasonable to just put him on, you know, deal with my solemn or not. But no, he goes uh -huh. with the Titan, which promptly gets mana leaked. And ravings for MJ. Once he gets the important card out of his hand. So you could you could very easily argue that uh, that MJ would be wanting to to snapcaster his flash freeze there, but both the fact that that he saves his flash freeze for a potential a potential point in the game where AJ doesn't have access to enough mana to or rather does have access to enough mana to pay for mana leak, as well as ensures that he gets the use of that mana leak when he's going to be desperate raven. Yeah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of subtle subtle bits of uh, of of play that you have to keep in mind. When you're playing with Desperate Ravings. Looks like a pair of gut shots. Not really what he wants to see here, I don't think. No. Or is that his hand? That's his hand. Okay. Well his 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 library looks pretty sweet. It looked like a Forbidden Alchemy and a Desperate Ravings. So AJ draws Devil's Play. He went down to Georgia last game, but we'll see about this one. It's like rampant girl. So, yeah. yeah, a little Spins bit of in. and rampant growth. So uh, Varno asked on Twitter why MJ is playing Traveler's Amulet, and uh, I mean basically to try to support this kind of crazy mana base. I uh, there's there's a lot of mana fixing in the format as far as as lands go, but it's very difficult to play a bunch of them together because a bunch of them require basic land um, or come into play tapped if you have uh, you know three or more land. So Traveler's Amulet is a card that allows you to. Uh, to, to find those land to help basically everything else come into play untapped mm -hmm. and, and really get your mana going uh, with untapped versions of, of those. I, I actually played uh, Caravan Vigil in, uh, in my rug deck early in the season for a very similar reason. That said, you probably want to play Rampant Growth over Caravan Vigil in most <laughs> decks that you could play green. But See, dissipate I at least felt now. clever. <laughs> so... MJ sorting his mana. Looks like he is unburial rights on that Sun Titan. So several freebies coming coming back uh, for MJ. So Sun Titan gives him another land. And I th I'm guessing he's probably just going to pass it back to AJ. He's in a pretty good spot here. He's got dissipate in case... Uh and he's got this bait. He's got all the counter he could ever. Oh, and he, really it looks like need. he, he maybe he's considering flashing back his grudge. Nope, no, no flashback. Inferno Titan. He's in a pretty bad spot here because it's pretty obvious that MJ has counter magic, and but he's in, he's under huge pressure from the Sun Titan to do something that impacts the board. He's I think he's debating you know, which of these various plays he uh, he wants to just spew. Yeah. <laughs> because I mean, really here he's you know if he casts a uh, Inferno Titan, MJ can actually just say okay. He can just let Inferno Titan resolve and use some sort of some sort of you know oblivion ring slash pacifism. Well, he has pacifism in hand. We well, know. we know that. Yeah. AJ, AJ, he needs to make plays that force MJ to use his his counter magic because if MJ if MJ has like three ways to counter spells, AJ's done anyway. Yeah. So what he has to do is figure out you know okay, what how, what way can I sequence these effects that force MJ to counter my cards without putting him in a position that if he has those counters, I lose. So if he has if, if MJ has one counter. 
then AJ really wants to resolve something that kill uh, wants to cast something that a that MJ has to counter, but isn't his best card. So it looks like he might be casting Devil's Play here. Yeah, we know that AJ is really in a position where he's he's pretty much not going to win. <laughs> M MJ has the, the Dissipate in his hand, and he has Snapcasters to go with it, along with the Flash Freeze and Mana Leak in his graveyard. So we're seeing Snapcaster, Mana Leak, or Snapcast Flash Freeze. So, the, the Sun Titan, along with Snapcaster, are going to make quick work of AJ, I think. So, pacifism. <laughs> to add insult to injury. Yeah. AJ's like, God, you first picked that? I hope. <laughs> if Sun Titan and that, how lucky. Now, if MJ really wanted to go deep, he could have dead weight in his deck. Attack with my Titan, dead weight that. Oh, goes to the graveyard, bring it back. Not that you generally need recursive removal for two toughness creatures once you have a Sun Titan. So AJ is, six mana is going to get him countered. I would like to invest in this Inferno Titan. That's actually not terrible that he got countered. I mean, he still has the devil play and now I believe MJ doesn't have any counters left. I mean, He's still in a terrible, terrible position. Oh, he's still in... Oh, yeah. I mean, that it, he would certainly rather have Inferno Titan countered there than have Devil's Play countered, because Devil's Play can theoretically get him out of this position. But Michael Jacob still has... He still has Ravings in his yard. He still has Alchemy in his yard. Yeah, he can still Alchemy. I mean, he, he still has a Sun Titan in play. <laughs> This is just not looking good for AJ Soccer. So three mana for Michael Jacob. Oh nope, even more. Six mana, seven I mana. He another mana leak. Oh, did he? I think so. Well, he has. I mean, he's flashing back uh, alchemy here. And there's mana leak anyway. There's a lot of action. A lot of good stuff. <laughs> there's an embarrassment of riches, is what that is. It's like, oh, you're binning those? <laughs> I like my chances. So I'm, uh, I'm guessing we're going to have a game three. Yeah. And AJ. For broke with uh, the devil's uh, play. Yeah, he has to it's, devil's play here, but has. it's it's getting a countered. Yep. And there we go. Yep. So AJ picks his cards up, and we'll be going to a third game. Mm -hmm. Do you want to revise your prediction here after seeing that one? <laughs> he had the counter when it mattered, and he that's did. He that's did. pretty much what got him the game. He also he also was in the play, which is a big deal because it means he can use counter magic uh, on ramping group. Yeah. And being able to stop the acceleration of the uh, the wolf run deck is a big deal. So AJ on the play in game three, I, uh, I don't know, I, uh, I'm not sure. I, I definitely, I like what I've seen out of Michael Jacobs' deck today. I think there's a lot of cool stuff going on, um, and a lot of powerful stuff going on. The, uh, the Desperate Ravings, I think, is awesome in this deck. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot, of, a lot of people try to make control decks work in this format, and they've generally been, been either Black, Blue, or Esper. And the, the Black, Blue decks you just don't have the... Uh, the utility to deal with a lot of things that they need to, things like Planeswalkers, things like Mirren Crusader, which Oblivion Ring solves, 
Yeah. And the, uh, I feel like the, the Esper decks are pretty clunky and don't really get a huge benefit from a lot of what they're trying to do with their mana. Whereas this deck, I think, uh, stretching for Desperate Ravings, things like Gut Shot, all these are just very, very powerful uh, effects that really synergize incredibly well together. You know, we saw that game, uh, Michael Jacob, with, you know, Forbidden Alchemy putting Desperate Ravings and the, uh, the Unburial Rites Unburial in his yard. Rights, yeah. a, a future Forbidden Alchemy putting that Sun Titan in his yard. He's able to you know, Unburial Rites a Sun Titan without you know, keeping mana up. Granted, a, uh, an Esper deck could do that too, mm -hmm. but the, the Desperate Ravings, I think, are, are dramatically more powerful than Think Twice is. Yeah. And uh, you know, I like what I've seen with Gut Shot as well. So I'm liking, I'm liking this deck. I think there's definitely some, uh, definitely some cool stuff. And stretching your mana for those Ravings Seems like it might be paying off. So AJ apparently amused by something. So shuffling up for game three. Yeah, I, I think I think on the play the wolf friend deck may may just be favored, especially if, if he's able to draw a uh, an acceleration spell into Thrun. Oh, I mean, Michael Jacob does have two copies of uh, Phantasmal Image. But that's that's a little light. That's still a little light for you know, being able to deal with the three copies of Thrun that AJ has, uh, as well as the, the potential Green Sun Zeniths into them. Into them, yeah. I mean, granted, the the, the Green Sun Zenith themselves could be countered, but uh, you know, just a Thrun coming down if Michael Jacob does not have the image immediately can can really end the game very quickly. Thrun plus Wolf Run can. Ugh. <laughs> Thrun plus nothing can also go blah, blah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is also capable of sound effects. Doesn't need any help. So... AJ Soccer, AJ Soccer has actually been doing some uh, some live streaming of, of uh, himself playing on Magic Online recently, which I think is actually pretty cool. I was I was exploring the possibility of doing that myself as I've been watching a lot of uh, League of Legends streams. Yeah. A, 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 a pretty big gamer as as uh, as far as playing particular games obsessively goes. I know a lot of people who play lots of different games. I'm yep. not one of those people. <laughs> I, I pick a couple games and I play them uh, pretty much ad nauseum. <laughs> and League of Legends is one of those games that I've played a great deal of and. Uh, it, it's a game that's certainly much more conducive to streaming than uh, than Magic is because so many breaks. But AJ's been uh, beginning some pretty pretty decent viewership. So AJ starts this game off. He has a Ink Moth into Sphere. MJ has the has the mana leak he needs to stop at least the first spell that AJ plays. We'll see if he uses it on this solemn simulacrum that I believe... Oh, nope, that's Thrun. I did not see that Thrun in his hand. <laughs> and this is exactly what we were just yeah, talking about. This is Thrun comes down, Mana Lake, who cares? I don't care about Mana Lake. And MJ, with no image to speak of... Yeah, no image there to do anything about thrun it. Thrun you. I repeat, Thrun you. And now AJ... AJ's in an interesting spot here because he really wants to keep open his, uh, his mana for regeneration. He doesn't know if MJ still has Day of Judgment in his deck. Um... I would, I would generally assume no, or at least not many copies, but uh, there's really no reason to let your Thrun die when you, you have the option of, uh, of giving beatdowns. But at the same time, if, if AJ is able to resolve something like a Primeval Titan, if uh, Michael Jacob does use Day of Judgment on his Thrun, you could imagine him just tapping out willy-nilly. Yeah. So MJ's hand... Here comes another sphere. Oh, another sphere, and no additional land for AJ. M Michael Jacob may be considering whether He's he wants to mana leak that. I, I would I would certainly not play birds here. I would definitely leave <laughs> my mana to, uh, to to regenerate my Thrun over playing a bird of paradise. Oh. No, there it goes. All right. He he may have a read that MJ does not have uh, have a day of judgment. He does have a. Forbidden Alchemy, which digs him into... Snapcaster... I saw Snapcaster Ponder. Yeah. In a land. Not sure what so the last one is. Michael Jacobs' hand seems to be Unburial Rites, Forbidden Alchemy. And he took... Oh, well, he took another whatever land. the other he one He took was. another land. There okay. were two lands. All right, so... Michael Jacob draws Glacial Fortress, but does not have Day of Judgment, so... 
digs, trying to find that phantasmal image. Does not find it. No. So Michael Jacob, does he shuffle here? He has a Sun Titan, and he has some land. Uh, it looks like he's probably, and no, he's drawing. Okay. He does have the, he does have multiple Snapcaster mages, which can, in this position, chump block Thrun. AJ does not have a Wolf Run, so the plan of chump block into that uh, that Sun Titan is very realistic. Yeah. AJ draws an Inferno Titan, so he can cast some sort of giant monster, but I don't think he wants to. I think he wants to stay on the uh, on the Thrun plan. Attack with Thrun, maybe play that Simulacrum. So the Simulacrum could get mana leaked, but that would still leave him mana up to regenerate his Thrun. Though, he, he, Michael, Michael Jacob has indicated that he does not have Day of at least yet. So... I mean, maybe AJ just wants to cast giant monsters and force Michael Jacobs to use his mana so he yeah. can't cast Forbidden Alchemy to try and find an answer to Thrun. So, I, first things first, you attack with Thrun. You don't want to let your opponent, you know, do something. I, I guess he doesn't have anything you could potentially realistically flash back with a Snapcaster that's going to matter. So, yep, Thrun yep. comes in. Boom. Like the simulacrum. Yeah, it looks like simulacrum. Michael Jibik lets it resolve. AJ searches for forest and casts Forbidden Alchemy. See, there, there's a situation that you know, I think it was it would have been totally reasonable for AJ to. There's the egg. The egg. <laughs> it's not going to do him much good now, though. It's awesome. Even if it's not going to do anything, it's awesome. <laughs> Look at it. It's an egg. You actually can't tell it's an egg because yeah. it's, it's a. It's a uh, a flip card, Checklist but, card, but. I, I swear to you out there, that is a Ludwig's test subject. So, Michael Jacob is really, he needs to keep digging. He yeah. needs to, uh, he needs to keep going to try and find an answer to that Thrun. He's, he's getting it to a point that even if he does cast a, a Titan, that Titan is not going to stop what, uh, what AJ is able to assemble. He, he's two turns away from being able to cast a Titan still. And he's going to be taking six points of damage. Uh, he, he, it, it may just be two if he decides to play a, a Snapcaster and Chump Block. Yep. But when he does cast the, the Titan, Aegis just going to be able to resolve whatever he wants. Yep. And he's got the Inferno Titan sitting right there. Right. Waiting in the wings. So, Michael Jacob draws. And it is a land. Yep. Legacy Open. Oh. Oh, there's a Titan. That I, I did. I forgot. I had forgotten that he had the barrel right. Does he grab the egg? What does he grab? <laughs> I'm not sure. There's a whole lot in there. There's there's a land. I think is what you want. I think you need to you need to, to cast be developing your mana. Yeah, you want to be able to cast a Titan next turn and keep up. Uh, well, you, no, you still can't cast a Titan and keep up mana. Yep. So Titan comes down. So, what AJ, AJ, if AJ has another land, he can attack with Thrun. If, if Michael Jacob blocks, he can regenerate and still cast Inferno Titan. Looks like he drew Galvanic Blast, which gives him much the same option. He, if he attacks, he can Galvanic Blast the, uh, the Sun Titan. I think he just attacked with both his creatures here. If you attack with both, Michael Jacob may not want to block Thrun to avoid, uh, to avoid losing it to something like Inferno Titan. And then, oh yeah, has Beast within as well. It looks like the Titan's going down no matter what. Well, the Titan, eh, I mean, there's, there's, there's various, I can see lines of play here that, that AJ doesn't want to, uh, oh no, he has, he has Inferno Titan and he has, uh, he has, he has metal, he has metal crafted Galve Blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so what he can actually just cast Titan, Galve Blast, Titan it, hit you for six. I think that's, that, that is, I think that's the play I would, oh, oh, what are you doing, AJ? You can get that Titan out of the way. I suppose if he, he could just do six damage here, if MJ doesn't block either, he can Titan Galvblast kill him. But 
you have to imagine that Michael Jacob is going to block one of them. And it blocks the Thrun. So he does two to him, bringing Michael Jacob to 10 life. Is he going to regenerate? What's happening? I mean, regenerate Galf Blast. So. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think he realizes the uh, the metal craft. If he loses Thrun, he can drop him to three. Yeah. This turn with Inferno Titan on the board. Three life. You, three life is still is not dead. I mean, it's not dead. But he also. I mean, he could just he could just Galf Blast him. But yeah, I. Uh, Yeah, I really don't know why AJ decided not to get that out of the way, then attack. He's going to kill it. You know, he's, he's committing a ton of mana anyway. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening now. Is it Garrick? He's not killing Sun Titan? He's playing yeah. Garrick? What? <laughs> he just dealt two damage. Like that, that cannot be better than... That really can't be better than, than... Well, it certainly can't be better than kill your Sun Titan, have an Inferno Titan in play, hit you yeah. for six. I don't know. I, I, I'm curious, I'm curious what, what AJ's real like, plan here is. I am correct that he has seven mana, right? Yeah, he does. Yep. So now... There's the, yeah, there's just so many things that can go that can go poorly for him now. Garrick isn't even a very powerful card at this point. Yeah, pacifism. He gets attack with Sun Titan, kill Garrick. And now he has to pass with a bunch of mana up. This is this is just very very bad for AJ. <laughs> there it is. And the egg. The egg! If, if Michael Jacob wins this, despite the fact that it will not be true, I'm going to say he won because of the egg. <laughs> See, I mean, I, I think AJ's uh, sleep deprivation is definitely catching up with him. Yeah. He's, uh... He's made a couple plays that... Is it... Um, I just, I, What's the other oh, is that Geist, Geist Flame? Flame? Is that... Wait. It, that may have been a Geist Flame this I whole believe, time. Yeah. So it's, it's entirely possible that I've been completely misevaluating the situation because that was actually a Geist Flame and not a Galvanic Blast. So it could be me who's the idiot. <laughs> but I, I, think, I think even then, I don't regenerate Thrun and cast Inferno Titan. You, you can't just let a Sun Titan sit on the board like that. He had the pacifism. But there's, mean, th there's, there's, just, there's so many things that can go badly for you if you let your control opponent untap with the Sun Titan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you, you have, have you know, lost your opportunity when your opponent's tapped out to cast anything that's going to have enormous game relevance. I mean, she has to imagine that something like this could happen. You know, He could lose that beast and, and Garrick could die and he, his whole turn was for nothing. Well, now he can't even attack profitably. Yeah, there's, nothing, there's really just he nothing he can do. He probably won't deal damage this turn. I mean, he could try to beast within that Sun Titan, but that's, I mean, that's just, that's not really where you want to be. Is he going to cast the Inferno Titan now? It looks like it. Ugh. So we know there's the, man there's Mana Leak setting up, yep. so... This game is, is... It's vastly turning over. It was a, a, a turn ago. I was just convinced that AJ was winning, and now I'm convinced that's the opposite of true. Because of the egg, really. If it weren't for the egg, AJ would totally win this he game. Could, but. He could flip it this turn. I know. <laughs> it's a 13 13 trampler. It's so big. There's Forbidden Alchemy that he just drew. So yeah, Michael Jacob now has lots of options, and none of them are good for AJ Soccer.
I mean, Michael Jacob, if, if AJ had killed it, uh, Michael Jacob could have still unbarely raced it back, which, yeah. which, is, which is pretty bad for AJ, but at the same time, he, he still has, you know, a Sun Titan and a, uh, a Sun Titan and a Thrun in play, or not a Thrun, Sun Titan and a, uh, rather, Inferno Titan, yeah, yeah, yeah. and a, a Salomon play, and then he sells that Garrick in his hand. Yeah. And if that Garrick resolves with an Inferno Titan in play, that's a lot of cards. Well, and we would have seen the Pacifism come down on the Inferno Titan instead of the Beast, type, beast Token. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it could have potentially been uh, Unbarrel writes it back, Pacifism that. But still, that, that allows you to take advantage of the period where your opponent is tapped out, force him to use that secret of play. So if he didn't yeah. have the Pacifism, he could be in really bad shape. Yeah. It has to be specifically pacifism to at least keep his pressure up too, because if he had un if he had uh, uh, oblivion ring, he wouldn't have been able to both oblivion ring and unburial rights. Looks like he's got flash freeze and desperate. Taking the flash freeze, putting the desperate in two lanes in the graveyard. This board state's just getting better and better as it goes. Yeah, this is. It's not going well. This is just grinding, 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 and not really grinding either. It's like haymaker grinding. It's the kind of grinding that you do with, you know, a gigantic three foot tall grindstone. <laughs> I guess it's not even very gigantic. For some reason yeah. I thought, I was going to say three story tall, then I said three foot tall. It just didn't <laughs> sound impressive. So Sun Titan coming in, and AJ can trade with it all of his creatures with it. But if that was what he wanted to do, he probably would've done it a few turns ago. But he just takes six damage. Draws. Here we got? A green, green sun, sun Zenith. It's too late it's, for yeah, that. Yeah, it's too late for Green Sun to matter. Well, we know he's got Negate and Flash Freeze in hand. There's... Yeah. I would, I would go, go so far as to say that uh, barring Michael Jacob receiving some sort of infraction that this game is basically over. Yeah. We might see a flipped uh, test subject, though. I, like I said, this is <laughs> the reason he's winning this is because of the egg. AJ just can't handle the egg. So AJ's hand looks like Oh, there's another guy. Geist Flame. That guy, that guy Slim is... is I, I'm curious why that Geist Slim is in his deck at this point. I guess it can kill Snapcasters? And Phantasmal Image, maybe? Yeah, it does kill Phantasmal Image. That's a good point. It can kill, kill a pair of Phantasmal Images. But wow, if, if that had been a Galvanic Blast, like, like I thought it was, <laughs> this, this game would have looked a lot different. AJ is going for Garrick, I'm guessing. Four mana so far. If he goes for Garrick, I wouldn't even counter it. I'd let it resolve and flip the subject. Maybe. Green Sun for two. Okay. He's getting a Meridian Emissary. I'm not really sure how that's going to get him back into the game. Yeah. But he doesn't counter it either. I didn't see much point in countering that either. I think uh, one thing that we may have we may have missed is uh, time was actually called for the main round earlier, and it may be that, that that AJ is trying to put himself in a position that he does not lose. Oh, I might draw. So he may be he may be at this point playing for the draw. I'm not really sure what if we're at extra turns here. We can uh, we're gonna go ahead and check that. Yeah, 
So uh, we're going to go ahead and try and find out if we are in extra turns, and if so, what turn we are and on. How, how many level counters are on the test subject It looks now. like three so far. So, all right, so this is turn two. Okay. But uh, uh, that is getting big. Just 13. Nope. Oh, there, there it goes. <laughs> I don't think it's nearly imposing enough sound for a 13-13. So people have played egg decks in the past, but they were usually a little less aggressive than this one. They yeah. usually they usually did all sorts of crazy stuff and infinite looped, but this just kills you. Yeah. So and here comes in comes the test subject. <laughs> Swing for nineteen. Well actually he's not a test subject anymore. The test <laughs> has been concluded. And, and now, now we, we know the results. Now it's just gonna eat mobs. The results are big, it tramples too. Oh yeah. How the least AJ could take is five. If he blocked at every the, single thing. At the minimum, he could. If he, he blocked five. with his smallest creature on Sun Titan, everything else on Test Subject. He would take six at that point. When he returns Snapcaster, <laughs> by the way. It's looking like the next turn, I think Michael Jacob will swing with swing for the win. On his on turn four, the turn he has to do it. Yeah, he's uh Well two, three, four yeah, he he basically has to kill him this turn or next turn. He's clearly not killing him this turn. AJ in the tank, trying to figure out if it's possible to defeat an egg. <laughs> we'll learn for the first time whether the egg is, is able to be defeated. I have never seen it defeated, have you? At least on Constructed. In Limited, I've seen it lose. <laughs> yeah. Never seen it lose Constructed when someone's cast them. <laughs> so AJ setting up. That can't be right. You don't want to put your two toughness guy on the non trampler and everything else in the trampler. I, that's what he's doing? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, maybe it doesn't matter ultimately, but that certainly can't be right. He took one more point. Unless he's actually killing Sun Titan, which he's not. That guy's flame's slightly relevant to keep a bunch of Snapcasters coming down and definitely killing him next turn. Mm -hmm. So AJ goes to one life, it looks like. He took... Is it one life? Nah, uh, that I seems a that, bit much. That seems, oh. that seems a little low. Actually, his creatures didn't die. Maybe he didn't block. I mean, did he just block with the one? Yeah, I don't think... He didn't maybe, block. Maybe he's just trying to kill MJ? Wow. What's, what's going on? He's just like, I'll take 13. No big deal. Beast within. If you're gonna beast within, I, mean, I can't imagine a spell that matters resolving. So, no. beast within. He's still going my for beast. damage. He's going for yeah. MJ trying to figure out, does this do anything? It's like, all right, you got it. You now have a beast without a pacifism. <laughs> this doesn't seem like it'll matter. Well, he's trying he's to. I mean, he's trying to figure out some way to actually kill him. I'm not sure what he was digging for there, but I don't think that was it. He has so he has nine power on the table with the Geist Flame to take out a blocker. But I mean, there's a Sun Titan in play. Like, yeah. There's not really any way that he can. Uh, and he drew a land. <laughs> right. 
I can't imagine that drawing a land was, was the key to victory in this situation. He's like, I'll attack you with my egg. You're dead. AJ deep in the tank. Some might say too deep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at his hand. It doesn't like I. I don't think no matter what he could take a return swing. I, yeah, no matter I, what I, I, I both has. cannot imagine a way that he wins and cannot imagine a way that he doesn't lose. Yeah. So, barring, barring again, Michael Jacob receiving some sort of infraction or <laughs> falling asleep, even if he just like fell asleep and didn't block. What, a seven, eight, nine? Uh, yeah, if MJ fell asleep and didn't block anything, AJ could win. And decided not to counter both right. instances of the guy's yeah, which if, I'm pretty if, sure he could do. I, yeah. <laughs> He's like, all right, no blocks. Oh man, you had it. <laughs> Another Garrick. Yeah, also not gonna do anything. He cannot assemble 12 toughness. Oh, there, there it, it is. AJ extends the hand, so Michael Jacob wins the match two games to zero, uh, extending